Hey, and welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to finish sanding the blasphemy build. Finish sanding, did you hear what he said? Yeah. <laughs> So welcome back. Uh, behind me is the Blasphemy build. And uh, if you watched the last video where I totally whacked the primer, I discovered why it went on the way it did and I'm going to get into that in a minute. First, however, a lesson in YouTube economics. Now then, my channel, this Wrench YouTube channel, uh, I officially started October 2nd, 2015 with a little in-car video of me driving my gray ghost around on some road, but I didn't really start the channel until May 16th, 2018, which was the first video I did for the classic retrofit electric AC. Nothing happened on the channel, really, between May 16th, uh, 2018 and December 15th, 2020. Now I say nothing happened. What I mean is nothing spiked um, I was getting two or three subscribers a day. So I put out content for two and a half years uh, for maybe two or three subscribers a day. Mostly not. I think I was getting about 30 subscribers a month. And then I had my big satisfying video that came out. And that thing made the channel spike really for the first time. I had a big spike in my subscribers. Now, um, that video now has over a million views, which was super cool that I did that last week. Now, crazily, over 99% of people that watch that video are unsubscribed. They're not subscribers to the channel. It came up somewhere in their YouTube recommendations and they said, click, let me check this thing out. And then they went off their merry way. If I just captured 2% of them, the channel would look completely different. Now here's why this matters. Now I put 129 videos out on this channel so far in the, I guess almost five years that I've been doing this. Um, each video is like, let's say 15 minutes long, some are 25, some are 11, you know, whatever. Most are over 10. Um, when I do a, a, a video, you can account on, for every like 15 minutes of video, I'm probably doing about four hours of editing um, and then about six to eight hours of work to get to that 15 minutes of uh, final video. Now that's over 900 hours of work I've done on the multiple cars and over 500 uh, hours of editing to get to where we are now, which is uh, based on about 100,000 views a month, which is where the channel is. Now that works out to about $300 a month in like Google AdWord sales. The, the channel itself has made over the lifetime $6,375 total for the entire operation. Um, now, we talk about like sponsors and brand deals and things like that. This is where the subscription thing matters so much. Um, the channel's not big enough for me to reach out to someone like Toyo or have them reach out to me and say, hey, we'll pay you $2,000 to do live one minute ad reads on three of your videos. It's not quite big enough for that sort of mass consumption. Now it's good for smaller niche type businesses like something that would be in the vintage Porsche industry. Problem is they've all been affected by COVID and supply chain and things like that. And they're just starting to get back into the swing of things. I'm also pretty good at sponsorships. So I've been able to get, you know, people that are loyal to the vintage Porsche world, like Restoration Design, like Haltech, like, uh, you know, all these other Renline, um, to give me parts for the, for the car because they know that it's a good place for them to get some exposure. And then they'll have these cool parts on this cool car that'll be driving around Southern California. It'll be at SEMA, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when I look at the last two videos I've done and how the subscribe to the unsubscribe breaks down, uh, the last video I did has 4,643 views. The subscribed was 28.99 and the unsubscribed was 17.44. So 37.6% of the people were unsubscribed that watched that video. In the previous one, 57.58 views, subscribed were 34.62, unsubscribed were 22.96. 
So when you think about how this thing breaks down, when you watch content from your favorite content creators, and let's say you've watched something from the same content creator twice, but you're unsubscribed. Think about how much of an impact that subscription can make for them versus the impact it has on you. It may not have any impact on you whatsoever because it's free and you can turn the notification bells on and you can watch the video. But for them to start showing that they have 25,000, 50,000, 75,000, 100,000 subscribers can make a huge difference to not only actually being able to make some money off of their YouTube channel, but then not taking a loss on it every month. So I implore you, for your favorite channels, just subscribe to the channel. Thank you. As for the car, this is my Husky uh, HVLP spray gun that I used to do the underside of the Blasphemy build. And I loved it. It went on smooth as silk. It was so much better than the Harbor Freight gun I'd been using. So when I came to do the primer the other day on this bad boy, I was like, oh, this is gonna be so good. I'm gonna have this nice buttery finish on it. And then it was terrible. It went on super dry. I didn't know why until I decided to completely break down the gun and I realized my mistake. Filter on top and you drain the primer into the... Pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 loud plane. Pew, 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 pew. Pew pew loud plane. So if you guys watch the process on how um, I mixed the primer, popped the cap of this bad boy off, put a filter in here, and then drained the mixed primer into the gun, that's how you do it. The big thing that I had changed between doing the underside of my car and doing the outside of the car was there's a little filter that is optional. It comes in the cleaning kit, and you can put it right here inside uh, the gun and what it does is it filters the paint from here to here uh, for any particulates that might be in there, which is a great idea. Unfortunately for me, I didn't know that you're not supposed to do that with primer. You're supposed to let the primer flow because it's thick and it's not gonna make it through that filter. I'd already filtered it. It was filtered by the time it got into this canister and then I, for some reason, didn't take the white thing out and I left it in and it did not allow the primer to flow through the gun as quickly as it needed to, to go on smoothly. So that's where I totally blew it. So the word to the wise is, if you are going to spray primer through one of these guns, and I really do like this Home Depot gun, uh, do not put the filter in this spot. Leave it out, filter the primer before it goes in, and then you're good to go. Let me show you guys up close, kind of the, the debacle, which is, uh, you can see all these dimples. It just, it just made this really rough texture everywhere. And I'm having to sand it back to flat again. Uh, the good news is it's easy enough to see, you know, the low spots because of the way the primer is. And that allows you to kind of block the uh, primer a little bit, which is good. So I've just been sort of testing the different spots to see if it would come smooth. And I have a new toy which is this, hi Ben, which is this pneumatic sander from the freight. You just plug it in and it's just this big old block sander. So I'm using it to do some of the bigger stuff. And I've done a little bit of the door, I've done a little bit of the roof, just to kind of see how it's gonna come along. And of course I have to finish it all by hand, um, which is no big, it's kind of part of it. Um, I realized I completely missed this part uh, when I did the body work before. I forgot to sand the filler down here and, and it just made for a, a bit of a mess. I've, you know, I've gotten the hood mostly smooth. What I'm gonna do is kind of take you guys with me. I'll show you a little bit about kind of using this big guy, maybe on the other side of the roof and on the door and on the main body panels. And then I'm probably gonna take the doors off and the hood off and the fenders off and I'll probably just finish them uh, outside in the light. Let me show you guys the roof here and, and uh, and how this pneumatic sander works, because it's pretty awesome.
car is officially blocked with 240. Uh, this video took a little while because I was not looking forward to that. I will tell you unequivocally, uh, that was a challenge. But I will say, now that it's done and it's just buttery ass smooth, it really is smooth. A couple things from that experience. Uh, you saw me use this, which is the uh, Baxter block sander. I didn't love it. Um, not because it's probably not a good tool. It's actually probably great, but this car is so curvy that having this smaller rounded sander uh, really seemed to make a huge difference. Pew, pew, pew. Number two, I'm really proud of my body work. What you just saw me do is wipe the entire car down with Windex, but what I was doing is I was spraying it on and I was wiping it so I could see the whole panel with a gloss sheen and it really emulates what your car looks like with a clear coat. Man, my body work looks really, really good. Like I am really proud of how well it turned out. So the question I have right now is I've done the entire thing in 240. I need to talk with Henry over at Costa Mesa Collision and just say like, should I send it like this? And we just take it down there and either do one more coat of primer and block it down and spray it or do I need to spray it here uh, and do another block and then send it over? So I don't really know. I'm gonna take some detailed pictures and send it over to him and find out kind of what he suggests to do. But I really hope that the next major phase of these videos is getting this thing in paint. Now, there's still a couple of minor things I have to do. In the trunk, there's a metal tube that I totally forgot to install and that metal tube is necessary to run the um, latch mechanism release cable. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with the metal tube in the back. And then right here in the front, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but right in the tunnel, the entire tunnel has been cut out because of the race modifications they did before. And uh, I need to double check and see if um, I need to make like a little piece that will go in there uh, but that's no big deal. Like even if I have to like mod something up and uh, you know prime it and paint over it, that's no big. Everything else has pretty much been done on the car. It's ready to go, I think. Uh, I'm super excited. But the next thing I'm gonna do is get Henry from Costa Mesa to look at it because he's got professional eyes and I don't. Pew, pew, pew. One of the challenges of being new to this, uh, especially new at this stage, is not knowing when I'm done enough. You know what I mean? Like, I think a professional would be like, oh yeah, it's good because X will fill in this or cover this. I don't have any idea, so I'm like just making it as literally perfect as I can. So that's the deal. Anyway, I hope you guys have learned a bit on this video. I know sanding is not the most exciting thing, but if you've picked up a thing or two and you're enjoying yourself, throw me a comment below. Please subscribe as we talked about before, and I'll be talking to you soon.